Hi everyone, I'm here to give you a really quick review of your pharmacokinetic processes in pharmacology. Okay, so we'll start off with absorption. And absorption is how much drug is getting into your systemic circulation. So systemic circulation, SC, and that's just your bloodstream. So how much drug that you originally administered is actually going to be absorbed and absorbed is specifically into your bloodstream. Okay, so I'll let this big blob represent systemic circulation. And how much free drug are we going to get into your bloodstream? Free drug. And we want free drug because that's how it's going to be able to bind to receptors. So we can see positive or negative effects. So antagonistic and agonistic effects at that receptor. So that drug is free to bind. Okay, and then it's going to be excreted. So I'll let E represent that. Between absorption and excretion, we're going to have metabolism. And metabolism has two subsections in it. Be that phase one metabolism and phase two metabolism. Phase one metabolism is what's going to create metabolites. And then those metabolites are going to go through phase 2 metabolism and then be excreted. Now it's important to denote that phase 2 metabolism can happen without phase 1 metabolism. And, but typically phase 1 is going to happen and be followed by phase 2. If you're going to have a case where the metabolites are found to be excreted in your urine, that's really bad. That's a really giant no-no right there. And you know that there's something wrong with your patient. Now, metabolism happens in your kidneys, okay? And you can either, and most, some drugs actually go through phase two first and then are excreted. So that's a really important thing to denote from this. And as well, if you have a prodrug, which is a very type of drug class, you're actually going to get active metabolites. And that's an important exception because when your prodrug is in your bloodstream, it's actually going to be inactive and it needs to go through metabolism in the kidney to become active. And in that way, it can actually have its drug effects. So the drug effects actually take a little longer than usual typical drugs. So it's very important to see if your prof says a certain type of drug is actually a prodrug. Now, evidently, Things are absorbed to, through metabolism to excretion, and that happens all through distribution. So I'll let that be represented by D. So we have A, D, M, E. So that's usually your little acronym that you'll see around in pharmacology textbooks um, to represent your pharmacokinetics. Now, there's different types of administration to get uh, different levels of absorption. If we use IV administration, so intravenous, and that's through a needle in directly injecting the drug to the bloodstream, you can imagine that through direct administration, you're actually going to get 100% of your drug that's administered. A contrasting administration method to IV is known as oral or PO, which means per os, which is just Latin for by mouth. And when something goes by mouth, it goes through the digestive system. And that means it passes by the liver. And when a drug passes by the liver, it's going to have something known as first pass effects. And that means most of the drug is actually filtered. And the percentages are different, but here I'll use 10% to represent the amount of active drug that is actually getting into the bloodstream. Um, so you can see if we're comparing the two, uh, we're getting a lot less drug going into your bloodstream that's active and able to take effects into the receptors in by mouth method than we are with the IV. Now this type of percentage can vary. Some drugs can even go 50 to 60 percent. Some drugs are as little as 2 to 5 percent. So it depends on the drug type. Now what else can happen if we have a free drug in the bloodstream? Well, yes, it can bind to receptors, but other things can also happen. It can also be bound to some tissues and stored there. So you're going to have up and down peaks 
of when your drug goes in and out of the bloodstream to your receptors to take effects. So it can be stored in fat tissues, that's the main one, or it can be protein bound. Now I'll use this symbol to define protein. And an example of that is albumin. Albumin is a protein present in your bloodstream and it can bind to your drug. So if these are my little drugs, we're gonna have some protein drug binding and when it's bound, that it's not free no longer. So you're not gonna be able to reach your receptors and have that quick of an effect. It's gonna be either distributed throughout the body, may even reach the blood, the brain, and reach different parts of your body to, um, and take effects there. So that can be an important condition to have <laughs> when you're considering what type of drug to use. Okay guys, I hope this helps you out. Um, the information here was taken out of Principles of Pharmacology by Goland, as well as Basic and Clinical Pharmacology by Katsong. Alright, thanks guys. Have a good one. I hope this helps.